this. Right, let me fix that real quick. Let's try that again. Witness her. Um, Furiosa. She is Furiosa. Uh, me and my girlfriend got back from Furiosa last night. That's why there was no out of the a theater reaction. Uh, because when my girlfriend's with me, she doesn't like to be on camera. So I don't really like to, uh, uh, uh like to do it when she's there. And she, she just doesn't like to be on camera. It's fine. She's been on camera twice in the entire time I've done this. Once was a magic video and once was a, uh, a food video I think I did a long time ago that's no longer on the channel. I deleted it. And I've actually deleted that video with her too. So she's no longer on the channel. You can't find her. She's a mystery. Does she even exist? Am I just a lonely fool talking into a camera? Maybe. But what you want to know is what I thought of Furiosa. Now to give context, what I think about Fury Road, which is basically the Mad Max film I should give my thoughts on. Not just the whole series, but it's the prequel to that one. They're directly connected, so it makes sense to give my thoughts on that one. I really liked the the uh, Mad Max Fury Road. I really liked that one. It's definitely uh, it's definitely more action over substance, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It is a wild ride of a movie. Uh, you know, I like Tom Hardy as Mad Max himself. Charlie's Theron is great. Got her own freaking you know spinoff movie. At least her character did. It's notorious they didn't get along on set very well, but I think they've reconciled since then. It was just, you know, the environment and everything going along, whatever. Point being, um, um, it's the action is, you know, top, top notch. I do like the lore of the world, and they expand on that more in this one. I like, and I, so I like Mad Max Fury Road quite a bit. And the long and short of it is, I like this film, actually, quite a lot. I had a good time with this film, but I'm going to start with the things I don't think worked very well for me personally, because one or two things did stand out to me, maybe two or three things. One, me and my girlfriend both agreed with this. This film is a little too long. It's a, it comes at just under two hours and 30 minutes. It comes at just two and a half hours. It's two hours, 29 minutes. And because of the way the story is structured, and you've heard this before, so this is not a spoiler, the story is separated into parts. They say part one, the this, part two, the this, or part three, something, something. And then there's five parts. And because of the length of the movie, and because not each part is length, uh, is I think um, spaced out in the same length, it does make the movie feel like it's dragging its heels at times. Not necessarily like bad dragging its heels like just doing nothing because it's not doing nothing it just feels like it's taking forever for us to get to for like from one action piece to another and while the stuff we get with the characters is good and we're learning more backstory it still just feels like not the right pace for a movie like this a movie where once the action starts it is bombastic it was it is intense it is practical say for some cgi stunt work it is it is fierce it is energetic it is frightening it's ferocious it's wild but once like it, but you here's the thing while the the movie is overall really good and the storytelling is good too for what they're doing because i think of how energetic the action sequences actually are when we get to like slower parts it feels much slower by comparison so while everything works fine, I think it, like, everything does work. I feel like the pacing, the storytelling style could have been adjusted a little bit. So that's minor complaint number one. Uh, number two, there's just some thing, logic choices I don't buy. For example, we know Chris Hemsworth's character, Dementis, is the main villain in this film. Uh, and we see him as a younger man when he meets um Furiosa as a young girl when he takes her in briefly and then she's separated from him and she wants her revenge and turns into Ani Taylor Joy 15 years later but 15 years pass 15 years pass and he, you can certainly see there's certain there's some gray starting in his beard when we meet him but you see it later in the trailer he's got like straight up grayish white hair at that point okay 15 years later you assume that Dementis is I don't know in his 30s to 40s, that puts him in his late 50s to 60s. Cool, great. You know, I'd have no problem with that. But apart from the hair, he doesn't look a damn different. Still, Chris Hemsworth level shape, which to be fair, it's Mad Max. I'm sure these guys do something to stay in shape for quite a bit. Um, but still, it's just like little lots. I'm like just thinking on that while I'm watching it. Also, and I won't give anything away, 
the entirety of Furiosa's plot and Furiosa's story going Furiosa's story going into not just this film but the next one, like Mad Max Fury Road, is kind of all Furiosa's fault. And I won't say how, and technically you can make the argument for why it's not, but I won't say why, but if she had just done one thing, probably would have been fine. Yeah, there will still have been some tragedy and some loss, but probably would have been fine. <laughs> uh, either way, though. But look, I'm, I'm now making nitpicks there. Otherwise, though, going into like all the positives now, like, I, like I've been saying, the action is so visceral and raw and wild and energetic. And like they do, like it's the longer the cinema goes on, the harder it is to do action sequences in a unique way. And God bless George Miller for being like one of those innovative guys. Still made us feel fresh and new and unique. We saw things with like in this world from a, like a lore and action perspective. We're like, okay, that's cool. Uh, how the hell am I doing with that? Like this is all. It's just it is just awesome to watch. And it is our, oh, it is our people get jacked up and they get jacked up hard. Uh, <laughs> like it is, it is definitely, um, it is definitely warranting that R rating. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people said the movie is a little thin on plot and they're not entirely wrong. Like it's a very basic revenge plot, origin th story, all that. But it's held together by action and it lives and breathes on the shoulders of Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth. And all the other actors doing their bits, too. You get um, Immortan Joe back again. I don't know if it's the same actor. I think it is. But you get Immortan Joe back again. You get all of his kids back again. And they're all good. I actually really like how Immortan Joe, even though he's a horribly sick man, still is actually kind of diplomatic in many ways when he's, like, negotiating with Dementis. I do like that. That's kind of actually kind of cool. Like, he, unlike... Unlike Dementis, who's just, like, power-hungry and I want everything, this is a guy who's had power, had it for a while, and knows how to wield it. He's a lot more intelligent and, um, like I said, diplomatic. He knows how to control power a lot more effectively. Um, so I do, I like that aspect. But, like I said, it lives and dies in Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth's shoulders. And the, and the girl who plays the young Furiosa, too. She's She was really good, too. But... Yeah, those two, Chris Hemsworth was recently on Hot Ones, and he said it talks about how it is more fun to play villains because you're not limited by, you know, moral constraints when you're playing a villain. So you can be a lot more wild. And this, he he is chewing the scenery and loving every minute. He is just having a ball. And obviously the Thor-esque look is obviously on point for him. But he is just in the sorry, my, I just got to share. So my hair's a little wee. There we go. Oh, she has, that is a little better. Um, so he is, he's having a ball. And I like the character because even though he is still very much, you know, cruel, sadistic, somewhat psychotic individual, we, while we don't really get his true backstory, we do get some of backstory. And when you hear at least a little bit of his backstory, just a little bit, uh, you get the impression that even though he is a sick man, uh, he did horrible things and he's, he's... Art, oddly enough, did care about Furiosa, like, basically took her in, to, like, as an adopted daughter by force, but took her in, and he, like, he did seem to care on some level, because when we learn about him, we, under, we now learn that just, he's just like Max, he lost family, loved ones, all that, but unlike Max, who never really lost who he was, he just hardened up a lot, he, Dementis clearly went the other way. He just dropped into a uh, to abyss of terror and despair and, you know, sorrow and anger. And he even says in your words, we're the walking dead. You know, we go for the next three, and then the next one, the bigger one. We are the walking dead, Furiosa. Like, it's, their final confrontation is actually just a really great bit of back and forth. It really is. Oh, it's, it's really good. So while you can, while he is still a terrible person, you can see the reflections of a, the kind of the man he once was, and he probably was at one point a good man. It's kind of like what the apocalypse and everything will do to you. He just takes from you. Uh, and then, obviously, you get Anya Taylor-Joy, who was our lead, and then, like I said, it lives and breathes on both these character performers' shoulders. And it is amazing, honestly, how much she gets, uh, she emotes, and how much she... Uh, 
represents and how much we get from her without her ever saying words. Like, she does talk, and we do know she does talk. It's in the trailer she talks, but she's not having very in-depth conversations very often. In fact, through a large majority of the film, her character, like, doesn't, I would say, well, was a, I'm trying to think. We, she gets taken in by Morton Joe, and um, it's not until, I want to say, like, 30, 40 minutes later, she actually says something. Um... Is, like it takes for a while. and then it's only sporadic stuff until near the end where we finally get more from her and out of her and all that and it's weird because Charlize Theron's character our fear has talked a lot more than Anya Taylor Joy so Anya Taylor Joy arguably has a harder job to do because she's got to get a lot of this down without actually saying it's all facial and you buy it when she is furious she is fierce. She wants to kill. She's murdering. But there are points where we do see her vulnerable and we do see the fact that she does care. And do see there's you can see it in the trailer. There's a guy she does bond with. I believe it is. I, I don't know if they actually said flat out say there was a romance, although it's very much implied. I don't know if they were like actually, you know, together. But uh they because we never see any of that. But uh it's very uh, very implied that there was like a romantic connection with it. Um and seeing as the guy's not in the um, you know and Max Fury Road, you can guess how that relationship ends. But, um, like, when she's vulnerable around that individual, you see it, and you can see that there's still a soft person there, and there's still someone who just wants what was taken from her. Uh, and, in like, when she's vulnerable, it works. When she is angry, or when you see sorrow in her face, it works. It's just... it. Look, it's, I want, it's hard to say if it's better than Charlize's version, because... That's a that's an older version of this character, and who's now just been part of this world for so long, hardened up. But she's interacts more, she has more conversations, she's just a bit more older and wiser. So it's again, it's difficult to say, but it's a different type of performance that I really appreciated. And as I said too, we we learn a bit more about the world in this version. We do. Um, we learn about like all of the like the the great what was it the great um cities or the great fortresses of the wasteland uh there's gas town i think it's bullet town or bullet city uh, uh there's the citadel and i believe there was like one other one there's like four there's like four of them and that's it that's really that's all the sorts of like civilizations in the wasteland at least of australia we have no idea what the rest of the world looks like in that mess um for all we know australia just got shittier and everything got better <laughs> not any imply that's not the case I'm still trying to fix my hair up here. Uh, oh, oh, that's good. That, well, now let's just keep it that way, huh? Here, can we just keep it that way for a while? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think one other thing I will put against it is the fact that there's no real stakes for Furiosa because we know what happens with Furiosa. She survives this film. Uh, but it's still a great... And you know what? That might be another issue with that pacing. Because we're, I'm watching this and it's really engaging, but at the same time, like, I mean, I know what's going to happen, so I'm not overly worried about what's going to happen. It is interesting to see how she loses her arm, though. That's interesting. Um, and I will say, the, uh, while it's mostly all practical and there are some CGI backgrounds and sets like that, there are occasions when the uh, green screen is very evident. Very, they can tell they're in front of a screen. But... Those are far and few between. The rest of it just looks fantastic. And I love, like I said, I love the world of lore. I love the fact that most of these vehicles are all ramshackled together and some of them are hybrids. Like the War Machine, which gets is created in this movie and then gets rebuilt in the next movie. Or, or is clearly rebuilt in between the movies. Uh, like it's debuted here. It's got, uh, it's got some great uh, stuff going on. But overall, um, uh, I, I would still definitely recommend this for a watch. If you're a fan of Fury Road, you will like this. If you want just a bombastic, balls-to-the-wall action film, I recommend this as well. I also recommend Fall Guy, but that's a different type. It's an action comedy, which is still a very good movie. If you can still go see Fall Guy, go support Fall Guy. It needs all the love it can get. Uh, but we'll see where this film ends up, ends up this weekend. Apparently, the three-day forecast is, like, 40 million, which isn't that great for a three-day movie holiday weekend especially because this film i think is made on a decent budget like you know i'm gonna look that up for the last bit of uh for the last bit of this video let's see here furiosa 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 
Oh, Furiosa, Furiosa, have you seen Furiosa, Furiosa, the tattooed lady? Uh, $168 million. Yeah, that tracks, because you already got the, um, uh, you already got the, think word here. Really? Nicholas Holt was in here? Where was Nicholas Holt? I mean, he's a war boy, but Nick, where was Nicholas Holt? What, did they give Tom Hardy a credit, too? Because, uh, the... No, this doesn't, uh, this isn't a real big spoiler or anything like that. The, um, the, the credit sequence is, um, like, shots from Fury Road. Uh, so that, you know, lead, it's showing you, all right, and this is where the story landed. So maybe we'll see what, if they do another one, maybe we'll see a sequel to where, like, the story ends. Um, they just say Nicholas Holt. They don't actually say who he's playing. I did not see Nicholas Holt in the movie, but I'll have to, uh, keep an eye out for that. But yeah, $168 million. This film, that means, and this film had a solid budget, marketing budget, mind you. I wouldn't go so far as to say $100 million. I don't think it was that much, but 70 ish 75 This film probably, and I'm being generous here, has did about 320 to break even. Which, to be fair, I believe the original Mad Max for your road was somewhere in that as well. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road, one two thousand. And let's see, uh, yeah, that, that's roughly speaking where the original was at too. That was between probably 154.6 and 185.1. If you do the basic math real quick on that, let's see, 9, uh, 33, 39. If you do the basic math and average it out, that means you're like, yeah, you're looking at a film that was made on almost 170. So this is literally almost the same budget as the original. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, what did you think? Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Quick uh, thing, though, Garfield. I will not be seeing Garfield this week, but don't worry, I will see you next week. There's no big screenings coming out next week, so I will be going to see it next week when, when there's a bit more time. I was tempted to see it tonight, but I'm like, I've already got this. i got to catch up on my what-if from yesterday. i got to do today's what-if, and i got to do tomorrow's what-if. So I have three other videos to do after this. So, yeah, no, it's probably a better idea to just save it for next week. But don't worry, I will get to Garfield. Don't worry. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.